Good afternoon. We are the business ethics team from Marywood University. Today, we will be representing Custom U, an outside consulting firm, and we'll be addressing you, the board of DoubleClick, an online advertising agency owned by Google. DoubleClick, like other targeted advertising agencies, tracks a user's online presence and then matches advertisements to their individual interests. However, there have been times where this technology has become intrusive and even unethical. Most users are unaware that their information is being collected. They don't know that they're being tracked and they don't know who has access to that information. A loss of privacy and anonymity is inevitable given today's technology. We must ask, is there an extent to which this no longer becomes acceptable? Respecting consumers and acting ethically does not mean sacrificing profits. As a matter of fact, we have a proposal for you today that will help keep you on top of the industry and revolutionize the industry standard, all while keeping your user's best interest in mind. We will begin by reviewing double -click, the technology DoubleClick uses in its operations. We will then outline the legal, ethical, and business technology a framework you must operate within. We will cover an analysis of your competitors, a brief history of your company, and finally, given this research, we will make our proposal as to how DoubleClick can excel moving forward. As a brief review of your company's function and the specific issue that we will be addressing, I will refresh you on some of the technological components of the case. Targeted advertising is a practice which determines the type of product that a consumer may be interested in buying, and then chooses what ads to expose them to based upon this information. On the company side, using targeted advertising allows them to show people advertisements with a higher probability of the person actually being interested in the product they are presented with. This naturally leads to a higher sales rate for the company. Targeted, ad sorry, targeted advertising is also a benefit for the consumer because it cuts down on the volume of ads with which the consumer is bombarded with. Also, due to its very nature, targeted advertising helps by showing the consumer products in which they are likely to be interested possibly suggesting an item they needed but did not know how to find, or by suggesting a greater value in products they are already using. Companies are able to collect this information on a person's likes and dislikes in a multitude of ways, but the issue which, with which we are addressing is the increasingly popular use of cookies for collecting this information. Cookies are bits of plain text coding which can be placed on a person's browser at any time by the website that they are visiting or by a company that is affiliated with said website. There are two different common types of cookies, first and third party. First party cookies are placed on your browser by a website that you are visiting and will only record the activity of the user while they are on that website. Third party cookies are placed on your browser by a website and are capable of staying on your browser and recording any and all activity over what is usually an unlimited span of websites. Turning off cookies is problematic if you wish to use any website that requires you to log on, since when you navigate within the website, the website will not be able to tell that it is the same computer that had just logged in, and will therefore not allow you to see any personal information within the website. For this reason, social media websites, websites such as Facebook and Twitter, shopping websites such as Amazon or Target, and even some news websites require you to have cookies turned on in order to use their websites at all. Also, certain types of cookies do not allow you a clear opt-in or opt-out choice in the matter. There are companies which allow you only to request that cookies do not track you across the internet. An aspect that concerns users is that this practice is entirely legal. There is no legislation that requires companies to honor the do not track option. This technology brings up a host of ethical issues as well, such as whether or not these practices are an invasion of privacy, whether the user has the right to be anonymous on the internet, and how important it is to acquire a person's consent before you track them on the internet. You, as the Board of DoubleClick, must consider the legal obligations you operate within and any potential law changes you may face. The Federal Trade Commission, or the FTC, has developed a framework in order to protect user data and privacy while they are online. The main feature of this framework is a do not track mechanism. This technology, emulating a do not call system, would allow users to opt out of tracking by websites they are not currently visiting mainly those third-party cookies which offer analytic services, social platforms, and advertising networks. The Do Not Track Me Online Act was proposed in Congress in 2011, and it would allow the FTC to develop a framework requiring the use of an online opt-out mechanism. This would allow consumers to prohibit the collection or use of their information, 
and businesses would be required to respect that. While the bill never passed, all major browsers now support Do Not Track, and it is a request made by the server to the third party on behalf of the user. However, it is in the hands of the third party, you, double click, to either follow through or not. Aside from the Do Not Track mechanism, the Federal Trade Commission has developed has regulations for target advertisers, which include four themes. First is transparency and user consumer control. In this, websites should inform consumers of the information being collected and how it is being used. The second concerns data security. Data collection and retention should only be allowed so long as it is necessary to the service being provided. Third, calls for prior consent for policy change. And finally, the fourth calls for consent for sensitive data collection, which includes information on health, finances, and children. While the 2011 Act did not pass, we have already, there have already been recalls for the Act and its standards, we believe, keep your stakeholders' best interest in mind. Here are some of the other Acts that are currently in Congress and they govern the interception of data by electronic means. The main takeaway from these Acts is that intercepting information is legal so long as they have user consent or a warrant and so long as it is necessary to the service being provided. An issue arises when companies take consent to mean implied consent. They can argue that if a user is on their website, they are agreeing to have their information shared, even if they don't know that it's being collected. But given the nature of this information, we argue that express consent should be required. Many companies such as Forever 21, Petco, and yes, even Google, have been charged at the state level for collecting information illegally. Going forward, we recommend that gaining express consent, uh, we recommend gaining express consent while collecting data, but we will explain this later on. To go above just the regulations set by the FTC, we have researched the Network Advertising Initiative, a nonprofit organization developing self-regulatory standards for responsible data collection and use in targeted advertising. Their code of conduct must be followed by member organizations and include notice and choice to consumers, limits to what kind of data and can be collected and used, and restrictions on the collection, use, and transfer of data. Member companies of the NAI are pledging to rise above the industry standard and offer the best service that they can to consumers. <clears throat> the ethical issues we are dealing with boil down to this. Using cookies, corporations and companies like yours are collecting massive amounts of data and information on internet users, everything from their name to the type of underwear they prefer, and it is turning an incredible profit. But this massive collection of information is happening without users' consent. We believe that the ethical problem lies to the, in the extent to which companies and corporations should have access to internet users' activities and information. It's important when considering these ethical issues to understand the concepts of anonymity and privacy. While we sometimes use them in similar manners, anonymity and privacy are quite different. Our working definition of privacy is the ability of an individual or group to keep their personal information, including actions and beliefs, to themselves. Anonymity, as opposed to privacy, is the condition of being nameless or unidentifiable. That is to say, your actions or beliefs may or may not be public, but nobody knows who you are. To simplify things, the key distinction between privacy and anonymity is that we can think of privacy as preserved when we might know who the person is, but not what they're doing, and anonymity is preserved when we might know what is being done, but not who is doing it. For example, President Obama has privacy, but not anonymity. Everybody knows who he is, no matter where he goes, but he still has his privacy when he returns home at night to the White House. Now imagine that you get up to use the restroom, and without your knowledge, someone has installed a hidden camera in the bathroom. The beaver behind the camera doesn't have any idea who you are, your anonymity is completely preserved, but you would likely believe that your privacy has been violated. Now cookies, as Marilyn explained, are lines of code placed on your computer, smartphone, or tablet, which record your personal information and online activity, often without your consent. Think of it as having your webcam turned on all the time, with Google, or Target, or Amazon, or even your colleagues at DoubleClick peering at you from the other end, just like the beaver in the bathroom. These companies, including yours, are able to monitor nearly everything that you, you do as a user on the internet in order to collect your data and eventually send you targeted advertisements. The concept of consent is also vital to this case. 
Consent is a positive agreement, oral or written, to perform or to be the subject of an action. This permission requires that all parties be fully educated and informed, fully able to comprehend the terms of agreement, and that the agreement is entirely voluntary. That is to say, consent requires a yes, not simply the absence of a no. Now, as I'm sure you know, the goal of targeted advertising is certainly not to hurt anyone. It is not to spy on you or to violate your privacy. The point is to personalize your shopping experiences. However, in order to cater to your shopping habits, these companies need to track your preferences, habits, location, search history, and purchase history. Consider this example involving the superstar Target. In 2011, an angry man went into a Target to complain that his teenage daughter had been receiving advertisements full of maternity clothing and nursery accessories, and he wanted to know why. But as you probably guessed, it turns out that his teenage daughter was pregnant, and she just hadn't told him yet. So how did Target know? Using third-party cookies, Target assigns a guest identification number to each individual who, intera sorry, who interacts with their company in any way, from web browsing to the checkout counter. This guest ID number is tied to personal information, including your financial history, name, credit cards, email addresses, as well as demographic information. Not only do they access this information through use of their cookies, they also purchase it from third-party advertising companies such as yourselves. So why does Target do this? Because their mission, verbatim, is to make Target the preferred shopping destination for their guests by delivering outstanding value, continuous innovation, and exceptional guest experience. Target refused to comment on the pregnancy incident, but Andrew Pohl, the employee responsible for the algorithm that deduces pregnancy, stated, we're very conservative about compliance with all privacy laws, but even if you are following the law, you can do things where people get queasy. As you can see, the problem we are facing is one of violations of privacy and anonymity. Is it right that any company may have access to your personal information without your knowledge or consent, regardless of their intent? Is it right that Target knew of a teenage girl's pregnancy before she even told her family? We argue that it is definitely unethical, that a person's anonymity and privacy matter very much and should not be taken or abused. We all know that the thought of our actions being monitored makes us uncomfortable, or as Target's representative said, easy. But do we have moral rights to feel this way? Yes, because both anonymity and privacy are exceptionally important to a person's autonomy, and autonomy is a central value, if not the central value, of our free society. Autonomy can be defined as a person's power to make choices based on his or her own preferences or moral values, free of manipulation, coercion, or exploitation. Autonomy is central to the argument that all rational people are deserving of moral consideration. The United States' entire Bill of Rights is based on the belief that all people are autonomous beings, and it is this autonomy that gives us the right to worship, speak, and protest freely. Anonymity and privacy are necessary for autonomy because if a person is unidentifiable or her actions are confidential, she's more likely to feel free to associate with whoever she wants, read and watch whatever she chooses, and express her opinion as she sees fit without fear of scrutiny, all of which are freedoms essential to our society. And therefore, they are freedoms which unequivocally require consent in order to give up. Cookies themselves do not need to be thought of as violations of autonomy if their use is based entirely on internet users' consent. And this is what we suggest that you do. We implore you to commit yourselves to preserving your users' anonymity and privacy by requiring their consent for every action taken, their express consent, not just implied. Cons educate your users about your cookies policy. Inform them of exactly what personal information you will be receiving and to whom it will be passed on and respect their autonomy by requesting their consent before accessing their personal information and respecting their decisions no matter what they may be. Good companies have the best interests of their, of their uh, stakeholder, uh, stakeholders in mind. So as a target advertising firm, you should be concerned about privacy and anonymity. Based on a study done by Stanford University, there has been an unfavorable trend in, target, in, the, in, in the target advertising industry where many companies do not abide to the user's choice of not being tracked. Researchers from Stanford Uni uh, Security Lab have been developing a platform for measuring dynamic content online. They use a technical mecha mechanism called Do Not Track, which detects any form of third-party tracking including cookies, HTML5 storage, fingerprinting, fingerprinting, and much more. The methodology began with a list of advertising companies to participate, that participated in the NAI, which Alan has mentioned earlier. Stanford managed to test 64 out of 75 NAI members. Based on the research, only two NAI members uh, were respected to not track. Further, 
um, of 64 NAI members, half of them did not remove their tracker cookies even after users explicitly opted um, opt out. They claimed that they pledged to only, uh, uh, only allow opting out of behavioral ad targeting, but not tracking. This means that users will be tracked even when they've chosen to opt out. In addition, eight members promised to, to stop, stop tracking after opting out, but left tracking, uh, left tracking cookies regardless. On a positive note, 10 NAI members went above and beyond and removed their cookies after, um, after users opted out. Microsoft updated Windows 10 to use Do Not Track as a default setting. They, their intent was to eliminate any misunderstanding about whether the implementation would comply with the World Wide Web Consortium standard. However, when this became the default, advertisers stopped honoring it because they, they claimed it was not the user's, option, user's choice, but the browser's instead. Microsoft then removed Do Not Track as the default setting with the next update, but still saw very little compliance from the advertiser. According to Jeff Chester, the executive director of, of, um, for the Center for Digital Democracy in Washington, self-regulation is deliberately designed to, if, to, be, to not be effective, but to give the appearance of protecting privacy while actually enabling data collection to proceed full force. You, as a, the board of directors for DoubleClick, you could change this, you could challenge this notion. You could set this, you could set a new industry standard. This will be ex extremely beneficial as it adds a competitive advantage to your company and by, by distinguishing DoubleClick from its competitors. Now, as Jen explained, members of the NAI have already taken their first step towards holding themselves accountable when it comes to privacy, anonymity, and consent on the web. Unfortunately, We've seen that while several of these companies claim to care about these principles, the extent to which they try to protect them is far from adequate. It's likely that these companies sacrifice these principles because targeted advertising has proven to be quite a marketing technique for companies across the globe. But we ask you, at what cost? I'd like to draw your attention to DoubleClick's past, your own past. Two instances in particular are worth noting, not to dwell on your company's dark moments, but instead to reflect constructively in order to look to the future and to make DoubleClick stronger, better, and more trusted. Now, DoubleClick records online data by means of third-party cookies, as we've all mentioned. This is non-identifiable information linked to the computer itself, not the user using the hardware. I'd like you to ponder this distinction, though, because with today's technology, it's very easy to link all of this information together, especially when computers and web-capable devices have shifted more towards individual use than communal use. Oppositely, a company by the name of Abacus Direct compiles data on consumer purchasing habits, primarily by sharing relationships with catalog retailers and other marketers. In February of 2000, Abacus Direct's database held 2.9 billion transactions linked to individual consumers. Basically, if you've ever purchased something from a catalog, it's likely that Abacus Direct knows who you are, what you purchased, where you lived, how you purchased that, that product, and much more other identifiable information. Now, over a decade ago, DoubleClick announced plans to link its own data with Abacus Direct's data. And that, this raised questions for, from the Federal Trade Commission and multiple state attorney generals about violations of DoubleClick's own privacy policy. Essentially, the Abacus Direct acquisition would make DoubleClick's already collected non-identifiable information personally identifiable, which automatically would violate the terms of its own privacy policy. Now, the public criticism on the matter put enough pressure on DoubleClick to make it reverse its decision to link up with Abacus Direct. Around the same time, though, DoubleClick's stock price dropped 20%, largely due to concerns based on privacy. The FTC opened a formal investigation, while DoubleClick was threatened with class action lawsuits and accusations about their business practices. DoubleClick settled federal and state class action lawsuits, addressing online privacy for $1.8 million in 2002. Months later, DoubleClick agreed to pay nearly half a million dollars for investigation costs and consumer education, and these were issued by the Attorney Generals. Now, Kevin O'Connor, your CEO at the time, he stated, I made a big mistake. It was wrong for me to try to match that information in the absence of government or industry standards, and so until there's an agreement upon it, we will not. He continued, it became clear that the overwhelming point of contention was under what circumstances could a name be tied to anonymous web activity. Now we're just happy to get this behind us and move on. 
More recently, though, DoubleClick ran into an issue with Apple, where 37 states accused Google of placing tracking on a Safari browser. Now, this happens when users visit sites within DoubleClick's ad network on Apple's Safari browser. DoubleClick agreed to pay a $22.5 million civil penalty to the FTC, which is actually the largest penalty that the agency has ever secured based on a violation of one of its orders. Now, by default, Apple's Safari browser blocks third-party cookies, such as yours, DoubleClick, <coughs> including, um, including tracking browsers' history, consumers' browsers' history. So from June of 2011 to February of 2012, DoubleClick altered its coding to circumvent those default privacy settings on the Safari browser, and this was without consumers' knowledge or consent. The New York Attorney General at the time said, quote, by tracking millions of people without their knowledge, Google violated not only their privacy, but their trust. Based on the concepts that Caroline outlined earlier, I'd like to add that DoubleClick also violated their anonymity as well. In the settlement, DoubleClick agreed to not override a browser's cookie blocking settings without consumer's consent, unless it was necessary to do so in order to prevent fraud. The company also agreed to give consumers more information about cookies and how to manage them. While four companies total were found to have been participating in the unauthorized tracking, privacy groups have singled out you, DoubleClick, because you have a history of getting into trouble over privacy issues. In the political sphere, it seems as though privacy and anonymity issues are becoming bipartisan issues. So if legislation begins to form, it could be a swift transition into law. While laws relating to this technology are currently indirect and open to interpretation, and we believe that they are lacking, there has still been a great deal of pressure to, on companies to comply with standards and FTC regulations. But unfortunately, more often than not, as Jin mentioned, the reaction winds up being in merely lip service and not actual action. I offer you these past double-click cases to show you how important consent, privacy, and anonymity are in light of this technology. I'd also like to show you how, um, how much of an impact violations of these have already had on your company, your image, your finances, but most importantly, your integrity. Quite frankly, the quest for information has gone too far, but you can change that. You can change that right now, right here. You can be the industry leader in transparency and user consent, not just to boost your numbers, not just to rectify your past, but to act in an ethical way that ensures that you follow the principles that you as a company adhere to. As Jim mentioned, there is an alarming number of data collection companies which allow users only to request that they not be tracked on the internet. We would like to suggest a plan to double click, which, not on, which will not only ensure that they do not become one of these companies, but that will also allow the user to prevent themselves from being victimized by the unethical business practices of others. We would advise DoubleClick to be transparent and honest about their business practices going forward. We also hope to show that this practice is not at odds with maintaining a profitable business and even increasing our revenue and stock value due to the practice. We would like to propose, what we would like to propose would be the development of a browser add-on called Refresh that would consistently refresh any cookies placed on your browser, except for those placed there by DoubleClick or any session cookies that are required for the website to function correctly. And that would ask for the consumer's consent to record their information at the time that they are activated. This can easily be done with a few simple lines of code in a program, specifically called a plugin, that could be downloaded to any internet browser. These cookies would also allow the user to turn them off fully at any time and to add stipulations as to how their information is to be collected and shared. By asking for the user's consent to collect and share their information, this practice returns some control to them and takes double click away from the ethical abyss on which they have been teetering for some time. Two examples of these options would be a do not share information option and an option that presents the user with a checklist of types of information that they would allow to be shared with an allow all information to be shared option at the bottom. Separate from this section, we would also have a checklist of options of what type of companies the users would be interested in allowing their information to be shared with. For example, if someone is interested in seeing ads for shoes, but really doesn't care that Ruby Tuesday has half-priced appetizers, they would be allowed to check only the option of whether their information be shared with merchandise companies. With each option comes a different level of privacy versus convenience. The do not share option protects your privacy, but will not allow for targeted advertising, which will lead to an increased number of irrelevant ads on your device. 
The allow all option will take away some of your online privacy by allowing companies to build a consumer profile on you, but will yield the most accurate advertising and coupon offers. Furthermore, this is done entirely with the user's consent. There are several incentives for the consumer to take the option of installing this plugin on their browser. First of all, the nature of this plugin would allow the user to understand exactly what information is being collected and how it is being used, and would allow the user the option of reclaiming their privacy by choosing the Do Not Track option should they want to. Secondly, DoubleClick would be able to offer a kickback in the form of a coupon or a gift card to the user at the end of each month based upon how much information they allow DoubleClick to share with other companies, such as targeted advertising firms. These coupons would be offered from businesses to whom DoubleClick shares information. Possibly, DoubleClick could offer gift cards to certain stores as a form of targeted advertising and receive a discount on the gift card in exchange for offering it to their consumers. There are also several incentives for DoubleClick to consider adopting this as a business plan going forward. Due to the appealing and transparent nature of the plugin, it will attract users who use other browsers than Google Chrome, growing the user base that DoubleClick is able to harvest their data from. This would give DoubleClick an edge on collecting and controlling this type of information, which would allow them to sell the information to user-approved third-party organizations, opening up a new source of revenue for the company. A recent study examined correlations between transparency and business practices versus stock prices in a financial market. The study found that as companies disclosed information about their business practices and data collection processes to the public, their stock price, in price increased. We can apply the same concept to double click stock price. In addition, the company would see an increase in value due to increased goodwill from the move. Another benefit of implementing this business practice is that it minimizes the possibility of litigation based on any laws which may pass in the future, since the data collection is entirely consent-based. The startup cost for this project for DoubleClick would be under $1 million. This figure includes three extra programmers working for a month on creating the plugin, two full-time employees for general upkeep into the future, and a buffer for any other costs. Excluding the intangible assets such as goodwill and increase in stock price that DoubleClick can expect, if we assume that 30% of Google users would download this plugin, this would give us a market of 56 million people. DoubleClick would easily be able to charge $3 per complete data package per day from target advertising firms. Now let's assume that only 20% of the people who download the plugin will allow all of their data to be transmitted in exchange for in-kind compensation. This gives us 12 million people. If DoubleClick sells even 50% of this information, they stand to gain $18 million per day from this venture. And this is a modest estimate of the in interest that they could expect from this plugin. This number also does not take into account non-Google users, which would add to the possible market size. Should they make this move, DoubleClick stands to gain a substantial amount of revenue with a minimal inconvenience to the company, along with beginning to lead the industry into becoming a more user-friendly and ethical environment. Based on today's presentation, we at Custom U hope to drive home with you three points. One, that your users' privacy and anonymity, as well as your own need to use the internet, are invaluable for personal autonomy, and that educated, voluntary consent should be required for the acquisition, use, and distribution of personal data. Two, that respecting consumers and acting ethically most definitely does not entail sacrificing profit and that using Refresh and updating your privacy policies will actually increase your profit in the long run. Three, that you have a unique opportunity today to completely revolutionize the industry standards, making you not only a financial leader, but also an ethical standard by which all other advertising companies and corporations will have to measure up. We hope what we have offered you today has inspired and excited you to revamp your company's mission to not only further maximize profit, but also to take a bold step into the future of consumer respect and freedom. For your convenience, we've put together a chart which evaluates DoubleClick's past versus DoubleClick's potential future. We will not take any questions. Uh, thank you very much. Let's close this off so we don't have to hear it. <laughs> and reset it for 20.
that stronger, better, and more trusted is going to give DoubleClick a competitive edge? Oh gosh, where should we begin? Um, so I think I think we'll begin with more trusted, most, more trusted than you are right now. That's that's genuinely our, our probably our priority, our top concern here. And then I think as that would trickle down to being stronger and better as a company. Stronger what? Uh, what? Stronger in the sense of being trusted. So I'm going to address the, the trusted portion first, if that's okay. Um, to have your company be more trusted in understanding what you're collecting, when you're collecting it, allowing your consumers to be a part of this transaction, that, that's going to instill in all of these users the trust in your company that you should strive to have. Because having a user trust in your company will have that user continuing to use, to use your service. So that's certainly um, probably the, the main portion as to why being more trusted is the most important. I'd also like to draw your, your attention to your past, unfortunately, once again. Um, your past, you, you haven't been trusted. You haven't, you haven't been considered or revered as a company who's honest with their business practices um, or, or even forthright with, with what you're doing whatsoever. So in order to build on that and in order to, to try to maintain and even increase your stability as a company, we think that user, um, user consent is the most important and being as transparent as possible as a company will actually let you continue on in, in the future. Um, also, as far as being transparent and disclosing a lot of information to your users, there was actually a recent study um, in New Zealand coming from the University of Auckland that was published in 2014 and it studied a correlation between stock price synchronicity versus um, how much information certain firms would disclose to their users. And it's found out that as um, the firms exposed more and more information in a, a more steady manner, so it wasn't just little blips of information one at a time, they were consistently telling the users what was going on with their information and how they were collecting things, that their stock prices did actually go up as that went on. Um, stronger? I think that if you as a company uh, revamp your ethical standards, I think it would create an overall better morale, a closer knit company, a company whose employees feel um, better about striving for what you stand for, I think. I would just like to add that Warren Buffett has this philosophy where, where it's all about the long run. So by revamping and gaining cu uh, customers' trust, I mean, you could. You, I mean, so it's, I mean, once you've gained that trust, like well, now that you're stronger, like you could, you could actually. I mean, your business, your the business will definitely be better over like, over the long run. Um, I, I think that's a really good point. I, I that, but um, won't someone else just step in and take over the space that we relinquish um, and essentially continue to use the practices that we'd be giving up, and we will lose market share? We, we definitely looked at that, and so kind of how we went about it making sure that um, we, as DoubleClick, we're owned by Google, we are the top dogs out there. We are going to be setting the industry standard by doing this. And so what I mean by that is that you are going to have users looking at DoubleClick, looking at what they do, and wanting this plugin. Because once users are informed, which is something that they're lacking right now, but once they are informed that they are being tracked across the web, that, um, as to put it in a, a quote by one of our good friends that we've mentioned, um, you know, you don't know that you are being, someone is watching the internet with you. They're watching you as you are on the internet. Um, and so uh, basically, users are going to want this plugin, and we may get competition. We may have Yahoo do the same thing. We may have Ask, if anybody still uses that, um, doing the same thing. They are going to adhere to our standards. We aren't going to drop ours down to adhere to theirs. There is success with it, though in being invisible. If we just keep this all in the background, if we don't let people know that it's even happening, there, there then is people not. will forget about it because we'll still only see what's in front of them and they'll be oblivious. That is, I, I, can, I can argue against that in that uh, we've looked at many companies so far, many companies who try to be invisible. Some of them that I mentioned, Petco, Forever 21, Google. <coughs> In these cases, they try to be invisible. They try to do things without users knowing, um, such as collecting uh, zip codes when you check out at a store, uh, collecting your email addresses, and even like collecting credit card information. When I swipe my credit card, I don't necessarily know that this uh, retail is keeping all that information. 
but it gets found out, it will get found out, and there will be lawsuits that follow. In addition, even if it's not found out, if I have a thousand pencils, and I love all of my pencils very, very much, but I don't count them every day, that's not something that I that I do, but I trust that they're there, and you know, they're, they're my friends, they stick with me through the been. And you wind up taking one of my pencils. I don't count them every day, and it's not particularly harming me, maybe in a way, I guess you could argue. Um, I could also argue against something like that, but um, it's not harming me at least in the moment. And that's not something that I know. Does that mean that you did something okay? That's what we're arguing here for. All of Caroline's definitions and the argument that she put forth in the ethical manner, that's what matters here. And the fact that this goes along with some of um, what Meryl said with the financials, that, that is, that is just icing on top of the cake here because what we need to care about is our users and how our users are treated because we need to care about these stakeholders. These are huge stakeholders in our company and we need to look out for their interests. Well, my question is, I don't know who in the heck DoubleClick is. It's obviously a subsidiary of Google, something. I know who Google is. So why do I care if somebody trusts me? I mean, who is my customer? Is it just other big companies? Is it other retailers? And is that the trust we're trying to engender? So that's, I, I think that's um, one of the things I want to know is, is, is who is DoubleClick and who, who are the, who's the customer of DoubleClick? Who's the you're trust we're you're trying to gain? You're on the board of DoubleClick. I know, but I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. Board of DoubleClick. Um, so, so why do I care? If businesses are buying my services, why do I care? Yes, uh, the customer. Because you're arguing the customer needs to trust us. Well, I think someone jump in. I think that we use customer in two ways. Double click, your actual customers are businesses like Target and Amazon. You are trying to sell the data that you're collecting on me, the user, to these corporations. So technically your your revenue is coming from that. But if I don't feel confident, if I don't trust Target, for example, if I don't trust Target, if I don't feel comfortable shopping there, I'm not gonna buy anything from Target, and then Target's not gonna have the money to purchase the information from you. They're gonna want to, Target is going to want you to gain my trust back. Target wants my trust, then Target is gonna to try to purchase information or gather information from a different company other than DoubleClick. Yeah, I think largely the distinction we're making is our customers versus our users. So our users is basically anybody with internet access because they're the people that this information is being collected on and they're the people that we're trying to get to trust us and understand exactly what we are doing with their information, how we're going to use it, and who's going to have access to it. If you Google double, <laughs> if you Google double clicks privacy policy, we couldn't find it at first. We had a very, very, it's fascinating. We had, it's, we had a very difficult time <laughs> actually <laughs> starting our investigation, you know, because it is, it's invisible, um, it's, it's all, under wraps, and I think that made all of us even more suspicious and yeah. kind of turned us into. You know, I would like to add on that with, with the um, add in, the plugin that we're using, now all of a sudden no other target advertiser is going to have that information. We will be the only ones with access to that information unless if another browser decides to develop this product as well, and then we would have competition. But until then, us being the person with this technology, we suddenly have all of the user data online and all the other target advertisers. I've lost that. So given that, um, if I'm trying to go out and get customers, how do I sell my business as the one to, you know, how do I sell our firm as the one to go with? If Refresh actually makes our pool smaller than other companies are, that are, you know, just collecting data wherever, if only 20% of users have opted into our service, but other companies st can still get more users' data. How do I sell that to my actual customers? Um, that is a very modest estimate of what we could expect. The 20% is very modest because personally, if somebody was out there telling me all these people are collecting information on you and you don't know it, well, we're going to let you know it and we're going to give you some control back. I would absolutely download this plugin. It will be free for the users. Mm -hmm. That's a way to advertise it is say, yeah, hey, all exactly. these other companies are taking this from you. Exactly. Here's a way to also. Um, it does make our pool possibly a little smaller, assuming there are some people who don't download this, but downloading the plugin won't inconvenience the person at all. It will, the only thing it will do is keep their information from other third party organizations that aren't telling you what, it's, what is happening to it. So what it does is refreshes cookies that are placed on your browser um, consistently. Every time you navigate off of a page, it deletes that information. 
So nobody, no other cookies that are placed on the browser can go back and access the information. They don't have a record of what you've done. So the yes, is there an argument to make that my data is now better than other companies because of yes, all of Yes, absolutely. It's Especially because with the plugin, you now get to choose what information you want out. So if I'm interested in getting new shoes, I'm going to say that I'm uh, interested in merchandise. If I've never done a sport in my life, I say I don't want anything on exercise. Mm -hmm. um, so now you're suddenly seeing targeted advertising far more specific to what you like, meaning that those advertisements are going to be more likely to be clicked on, your product is going to be more likely to be purchased, and the company supporting DoubleClick is going to be more likely benefiting. So right now, so two things. We're relying on the information or the belief that um, if we track enough information and we can target the ads, we'll improve the purchasing mm -hmm. or we'll capture that purchasing. Um, is there data out there that says that those who opt out are more likely to be purchasers, purchasers, so that we can be sure that when they're when they select that opt out category, that or limited act opt in, that they're 20% likely to buy something, or the probability is 20%, versus those who just sort of walk around and don't do anything, their probability is 5% or 2%. Do you, so, will, are they are they more likely to purchase things? I can address part of that question. Um, I think. We're hoping that using Refresh, people won't opt out of the um, of having cookies placed on their browser. People certainly will, and and the goal is, is to have that decision respected. But I think part of Refresh is that we're explaining to the users how valuable their information is. I mean, if DoubleClick is selling my data, Merrill's data, everybody's data, it really, really an incredible profit is coming from that. So Refresh is basically telling me my data is valuable, we'll give you kickbacks for it in order to use that data. So the goal is that by giving me, by explaining to me that I'm, that my information is valuable, then I'll let you have that in for the exchange of the coupons that Merrill mentioned. So um. simply put, the campaign is bash the ones who aren't doing this and then give something back, give a kickback or whatever to those who are using this. Mm -hmm. Not a I don't even think that we'll need to bash them. Um, because to be honest, this is what we're doing right now. Uh, so to turn around and just kind of flip, this is something that we want to, to change for our company and our company alone. That's, that's, that's what we're worried about here. Um, so as we introduce Refresh, I think that people are going to recognize that this is something that's very important. And then, if you want to use the term bashing, the bashing will be done on its own. Um, I don't think that's a marketing campaign or anything that we would need to go after. Um, as I think it was, as Ellen mentioned, or maybe, maybe Caroline, the way that this works is all our users are lacking information. They are lacking, like, understanding this particular, like, kind of, of market advertising. And so we, if we just offer that to them on a silver platter and we allow them to choose what they do and do not want to, uh, to, to show um, different, different companies such as Target or um, Dick's Sporting Goods or you know, some other ones, um, then they're going to realize that this is information that's being collected. This is information that they want to have control over collecting. And so they're automatically going to use Refresh. I would just like also to say that there is no penalty if you do not allow the cookies to be tracked. There is an incentive book we would never penalize anybody for not wanting their information put out there. Um, to go along, that's, that's uh, just between educating or not educating the consumer. You can either educate them or not and do it secretively. Google, after having gone around Safari's cookies, um, is already sanctioned to have to inform the consumer of more information. So regardless, you don't have the option not to inform the consumer now, given your, your company's current state. So here's a way to inform the consumer and do it productively. So the challenge I have is that we, as a company, haven't been trusted, but we've been profitable. Right. Very profitable. Right. So what you're asking of us is that we opt for the high ground. That does not mean sacrificing profits. And that we change a business model that is already working. Yes, we've had lawsuits, and we can afford to pay them. So I'm, I'm wondering what there is about trust that you think is so important in, a, in, a, in an arena where consumers don't trust anybody. Uh, well, I, I guess we just have to, I guess we have to take the first step. We should, we should you know, put our, our hands out you know, and, and tell the, like, our consumers like, hey, 
we're, we're, you know, we're, we want to we, we want to be ethical. Here's a, like, you know, we're gonna take the first step. Like, hey, take take my hand. You know, I'm giving you. I'm, this, this is a sign of showing you trust. Like, hey. My, your, our, our plugin has made your information as a consumer in the entire industry. Your specific information is now worth more. It is a higher quality, a higher value, because we are finding ads that we know you specifically want, as opposed to ones that maybe you want. Um, and so as a higher value, you can either stay in the ground that you are now, continue making the profits you are now, hoping that you don't see any major lawsuits, which um, given the recalls for acts and acts that currently stand, once they get connected together, you will experience many more lawsuits. Or you can use this plugin, have a higher quality of information, sell that information for a higher quality, and make more profits. Are you awesome. asking why trust matters? Yes, I am. Yeah, I can answer that for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we, have, we all have a lot of different <laughs> ideas. Of um, why does trust matter? Right. I feel as though if you and I are going to enter into a contract with one another, even if you were just to open the door for me, um, and we're, we're chatting, we're on our way, and you go, oh, I'll open the door for you. The relationships are based in at least at a very fundamental level on trust. I'm going to trust that maybe you're going to open the door for me, and if that's not something that you do, then I'm not going to trust you anymore, and we likely won't have a relationship anymore. We worry that some of your, yes, you are the top dog here. You, we are talking to a subsidiary of Google here, and we're very honored to do so. But being top dog doesn't mean that you are doing everything properly. And we think that one of the major issues that you have here is is your, your foundation of trust is crumbling. And that's something that's very worrisome to us because what if some of your users start to learn of this? And they are, they're learning about this. You're actually being sued um, currently, I think your legal team is in the other room working on this. Um, you're being sued uh, several, on several instances in the UK right now. Um, in the past couple months um, based on privacy issues. So consumers are, are concerned about this. People fundamentally want to trust you. And hopefully their default setting is to trust you. And we want to ensure that that's the case because you're, at right now, your company doesn't rely on trust. It's very evident that you're not using uh, a, tr a trusting um, uh, plan of business action, I suppose, but that's something that very well could change, especially since people are learning about these issues and people are caring about these issues. I hope I answered your question. The UK, uh, because, uh, so I'm wondering, are, is there, are there data from any of the countries, uh, specific countries or Europe in general, that support this premise that these are better consumers for us to have? Um, you know, so in France, we're not collecting anything. You know, I don't. I don't know if that's the case. You right. can tell us, you know, please. So, that in fact they are better purchasers and more um, admiring of us. Okay. Um, basically, yeah, we did. We did also talk about uh, you know looking at how Google operates in other countries, some laws that may affect them, etc. Um, and so, kind of what we looked at is we, we began with the United States. That's where your board um, of directors is, and that's where the laws uh, that we're mainly operating within. We looked at countries that maybe don't have as good of laws, and consider China, uh, where the government is uh, very strict. Google has left that government. Uh, Google has left that country, and so Google already is looking at which countries they want to be in, which ones they don't want to be in. In regard to like what what people have to say, or maybe what uh, statistics has to say about specific consumers in different countries, that's not something that we were particularly able to find. Um, we tried to find um, really a lot of information on some of the lawsuits that are occurring over there, but a lot of them are becoming settlements. As you mentioned, you have quite a lot of money, and you can you can uh, pay off some of these some of these lawsuits in by means of settlement. And surely a part of that agreement is to not disclose um, some of some of the the legal action that was being taken and now has been halted. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that information is unaccessible to us, but um, as we've searched, we've realized that a lot of what consumers want and what we think that consumers want based on, um, we've got a slide here of uh, references that we've been working on, um, and we've got far more as well, like the way that people, the way that consumers want to operate with a company such as yours on the web, they want to know what's going on and they want to say. Um, just a brief example, I was at Target recently before we've, we've been working on this project as a team, and they gave me a coupon for uh, like Nivea lip balm. And I was like, oh, I love Nivea, that's awesome. I'm so happy that that's something that they would do. Matter of fact, that's so wonderful Like that I just by chance got this particular coupon. Of course not. They, they've been tracking all of this information probably since the moment I stepped in there. And that's something that hasn't been apparent to me until I stepped into this industry to help you out. So 
thinking about that, people want target advertising. As Caroline mentioned, target advertising is not at all bad. It allows me to have that Nivea lip balm coupon instead of one instead of one in regard to um, you know maybe sporting goods. And so in that particular regard, we would we would like to enter into this relationship with you. We just don't quite know how, and now users will know how. Thank you very much. Now we're going to go into us. <laughs> Thank you for your time. <laughs> Thank you. And give you feedback um, for your 10 minute. I think that you've based an enormous amount on trust and my sense is that while you did a pretty good job of addressing it, you can find some really powerful, compelling statistics and shoot the statistics of trust out. You are talking about an industry leader changing practices when they can afford to keep paying for their mistakes. And so I think that if the more you can find a very specific data, whether it's Edelman's trust or any of the other things that you can that just is able to succinctly convey that this isn't a feel good, nice to do. And your thing about relationships was great, but it isn't going to have any impact, I don't think, on somebody who's already an industry leader. Okay. I think what is, is the, the impact of, maybe there's something about the number of lawsuits that, that shift awareness or something, but I think that you have a strong case related to trust, but I think you need to make it, especially in 10 minutes, extremely powerful because you really need to persuade. Sure. And it seemed as though that was your key, that was your key shift, that that, that would have a huge impact if they were trusted. And so I think there's a gap in terms of whether they, they would think that. Okay, absolutely. Um, Others? Just to, to, to use also that, Jim, you mentioned that this, this is a long-term effort here, yeah. and you're looking to keep people and us at the top, so or you know this group at the top. I think that goes right along with that. Yeah, I think um, I think you guys did a lot, a, a great job. I saw a lot of energy. Clearly, there's a lot of passion. I don't know whether you knew anything about this in the industry when you started, but there was a lot of passion in your presentation, which is terrific. Um, I, as you can see by my questioning, I, I had a real hard time with your connection. The, the trust issue I thought was really important, but I had a real hard time with the connection of where DoubleClick fits in the, the marketplace um, and your emphasis on consumers and end users. Because as, uh, as an individual that purchases things, I'm purchasing from Target or Kohl's or wherever I'm purchasing stuff from, but I've never heard of DoubleClick. So to have a trusting relationship with this subsidiary of Google wasn't as persuasive to me. As a member of the board, I'd be more concerned if you were going to tell me Target will drop us and so-and-so will drop us. And then you start, I start going, whoa, that's financially a problem. So I, that, I just thought that that might have been, while the consumer is obviously not the ones that have to download the plug, I thought that uh, that's why I was having such a hard time following your argument. Yeah, I would just add to that because that's a lot of what I wanted to address too. And, and maybe the way to help is to very clearly out that, lay out that right now, while consumer trust and their perceptions of you is important once they find out about you, with the, the plugin that you're suggesting, they actually do you actually enter a direct relationship with them, and that's the valuable part. So you know, very clearly laid out instead of you know, because I think we got to the point where we figured it out, but sort of at the end. You know, very clearly established ahead of time. You know, or right now, they're implicit. You we know we're collecting on this data, but we don't have a direct relationship to them that's acknowledged. But here's how, here's the value proposition of acknowledging that relationship and making them partners. Sure. Then we're more valuable as a company to our clients. Mm -hmm. When you present tomorrow, you're only going to have two or three of you, right? Mm -hmm. It's really important that you not have the reliance on notes that you do now. You did do a compelling job of energy and persuasion and all of that, but in your 10 minutes tomorrow, whatever you choose to say, make sure that you are confident enough with it that you don't need to rely so heavily on your notes. Because I think that will, it, it didn't affect, at least for me today, 
but if I were doing the 10 minute, I would really expect that you would integrate to make the most persuasive connection with us or with whoever it is. With whoever, actually, I think you're gonna have only one person in the 10 minute, but. So I would, I would say that. I think you, you are wonderfully prepared and you had great information. The challenge will be being persuasive based on what, you know, based on the two things you've heard about that trust seems to be important, how do you establish that, and, and the reality of making clear um, who DoubleClick is so that people can follow, that are listening, what that, what that is. Anything else? Um, I, I, this is sort of content, but it's also, if it's part of your persuasion, I don't know if you plan to use the numbers where you said this it cost a million dollars, mm -hmm. Um, and then you project $18 million revenue per day. You didn't say what our revenue is if we don't do it. And if that's $47 million or $118 million, I, I, you, know, you can stop right there. Okay, yeah, I did have the percentage of it. Okay. okay, just okay. you know, in case that's a little something that we need to not use. Anything else? You did a really remarkable job, and you deserve, you deserve a great deal of credit. Anything you want to ask of us? <laughs> no, I, I was actually going to ask about how comprehensive this was, but then I realized that tomorrow we will not have. No, you did it. That. So never mind. Was, the PowerPoint was impressive. It was, um, it was very good. good. Okay. The charts were very good. The yep. good. Okay. Very good. Absolutely. Um, so think carefully about um, how you balance when you're dealing with an industry leader, how you balance the reason for them to shift okay. um, dramatically. Just saying industry leader when we're already apparently the industry leader in profit. Um, and when you think about the number of fines that the banks keep paying, it's a perspective on the fact that the capacity to pay fines is not the deterrent that it would be for a company that would go out of business. So, but just yeah. be better, but you have tremendous stuff. Just pull together what you think in 10 minutes is really going to cause um, a company to want to keep talking to you. Okay. Great job. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you, so I, and you won't have slides tomorrow, but you did a lot of reading of quotes or definitions. You know, this is what anonymity is, this is what express consent is, and then you spent time on that. Mm -hmm. I think there's a value in that tomorrow. But watch how much of the 10 minutes it takes up because you want to use that to solidify the point you're making, yeah. not become the point you're making. Okay, thank you. That's a good Anything else? Congratulations. Congratulations.